Hello and welcome. Uh, I haven't I haven't had video game content on here in kind of a hot minute, but I decided uh, I decided it was time it was time to check something out. the The trailer for Steel Aces dropped last week and generated a lot of buzz uh, in the community and a lot of questions that were unanswered by either the trailer content or the website, which only spawned more questions. So, um, the Steel Aces development team. Uh, it's from a studio called Armative Studios. They're out of Germany, and they agreed to sit down with me and show me uh, a sample of their game and answer some of my questions. So I have an interview here uh, with two of the representatives uh, from the development team, and let's take a look. There's some there's some interesting stuff uh, right around the corner, I think, and I'm I'm a little bit excited. But uh, without further like rambling, let me let me show you our interview, and you can see why. Here we go. All right. So tell me. Um, so, so Armits of Studios, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your team before we get into the project? Yeah, sure. So um, we're a startup game developer company from Germany. The Steel Aces project is the first large project that we've been working on. Myself, I have an engineering background. I'm actually an electrical engineer, mm. but I've always done programming on the side, right? So I've, I've always tinkered in programming projects. And... I also played World of Tanks in War Thunder mm -hmm. for quite a significant amount of time. So mm -hmm. I've, I've played World of Tanks for around uh, 10 or 11 years. Oh, wow. I played War Thunder basically since Tanks were released, a bit before that actually. So I, I, I got to know those games quite a lot, I'd say, over the years. Mm. Did you play <laughs> Did you play Clan Wars as well? Oh yeah, I okay. took part in a bunch of Clan War campaigns. Um, was my, I think I got around quite a bit. I, I, I did, never played professional though. Sure. And so we have, so here we have, so we have a, we have a Unicum and an engineer. So that already, that already is super interesting. So you, you have an interest in military history and in armored vehicles. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Oh yeah. So <laughs> uh, I, I'll be honest. I, I'd say, um, I, I was always interested in technology in general, but uh, I have to say that Wolf Tanks was certainly a catalyst when it came to tanks. Um, it really sparked my interest. And I, I have visited a bunch of tank museums in my life. Um, mm. was in France and I think it's called Sumo. Uh, really life-changing experience for that matter. I also went out to Militrax this year, absolutely lovely event. And also Tankfest, absolutely amazing. Took tons of pictures of all the vehicles. And we're actually using those um, for making sure that the vehicles are correct, right? Right, we, we talk a little bit about uh, historical realism and... Can you tell me... So you mentioned that we're not going to have fake tanks in the game. Like, I'm going I'm to I'm say that. That's, that that's, yeah, I'm going to draw that conclusion. Um... I think that's you can awesome. Say that. Yeah, there's a lot of there's games out there that, that have that have tanks that that never existed. Um, yes. So you're, you you want to kind of keep to the history, especially visually, as much as possible. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you're applying um, sort of your vision of historical realism to game balance? But um, we're trying to make the game a fair experience, obviously, right? Because it's not a, a real life simulation, right? It, it has a lot of realistic aspects, but it's not a one-to-one -one representation of real life. Mm. So with matchmaking, one of the first things that we're going to do is we'll limit the range of rank spread to one. So uh, oh. a rank seven vehicle won't meet a rank nine right? because the, the power levels are just too different and it's just frustrating and unfair, right? Sure. Plus one, minus one matchmaking is what this man is saying. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, are you going to have artillery uh, in this game? Like it, like, it, like it's represented <laughs> um, in World of Tanks? Uh, no. Okay. So in fact, there will not be any sort of player controlled artillery in the game at all. Maybe, maybe that there may be some sort of artillery strike in a very, very restricted manner. Hmm. If we're not having um, sort of self-propelled gun type artillery like we have in World of Tanks represented in the game mm -hmm. in that way, what are some of the other vehicle classes that you guys are going to have? Yes. So um, first off, we have to uh, slightly differentiate between the World War II and the modern era. Yes. Uh, because they have different classes. But uh, for the World War II era, we'll basically talk about uh, light tanks. So in general, uh, reconnaissance vehicles. Uh, we'll have medium tanks. We'll have heavy tanks. And tank destroyers, though um, the, uh, basically tank destroyers will also contain some uh, vehicles which aren't, weren't designed as tank destroyers, mm. like uh, the Brumbeer, for instance, or mm. even the Sturmgeschütz. Like, historically, they weren't designed as tank destroyers, but they basically function as one in the game. So they go into the tank destroyer category, but that's um, 
a bit more of a, a imprecise term for us. Okay. And for the modern vehicles, we'll classify vehicles into only three groups, which is infantry fighting vehicle, which is um, main battle tank and in general fire support. Mm -hmm. So anything like a, a striker, M1128, the uh, armored gun system, that would basically go into the fire support vehicle role because we, we don't really have tank destroyers nowadays, right? right. Right. Okay. Right on. So another another like burning question that that is then once again uh, on the forefront of my mind as a as a World of Tanks player, ex World of Tanks player, really. Um, premium ammo. Uh... Hmm. So um, to, to put it bluntly, uh, we don't balance ammo or firepower around economic aspects, hmm. right? So we won't have shell A and shell B, where shell B is just you know categorically better and the only downside it has is it's much more costly right mm. that's not going to be the case um shell prices will probably be constant for a gun so whichever gun you fire with a chieftain for instance is always going to cost the, the exact same you guys mentioned that you're going to have yes. the explosive reactive armor on your website um yes okay so are there going to be like scenarios where you need to switch to another type of ammo to do damage properly to a vehicle uh, in game down the line? Yes. Okay, interesting. So um, that will be both relevant for the World War II era and for the modern era. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, there are shell types that you can group together, right? So all armor piercing rounds will behave similarly. It doesn't matter whether they have a ballistic cap or a cap and a ballistic cap. Uh, macroscopically, they're basically a steel slug that punches through armor. So you use them in the same way. Mm. But there are a few things that you should keep in mind. So for instance, overmatching uh, is a thing in our game. Yes. And uh, people will probably think of the overmatching mechanic in World of Tanks. Um, it's not going to work exactly like that. Um, overmatching is a thing in real life as well, but it, it behaves differently to how other games do it and will feature a similar mechanic. And another thing is that um, certain rounds have explosive fillers, for yes. instance, right? right? And if you shoot um, a, a, an armor piercing round with an explosive filler through a window pane, then of course the explosive filler is not going to set off, right? And we're going to represent that in the game as well. So sometimes if, you know, you're shooting a very lightly armored vehicle like an ASU-57, it might not be the most sensible to choice to shoot a solid round, right? Mm -hmm. It might be more sensible to use a high explosive round. And as we move into the higher tiers where we feature composite armor, like on um, M60s or uh, the Russian T64 and T72 series, um, it might be a really bad choice to fire uh, heat rounds mm. against uh, composite armor, if that is specifically effective against that. It really depends on which type of composite armor we're talking about, right? So uh, we have different modifiers for each type of composite armor. If you take a look at the garage, for instance, the Chieftain has uh, uh, an upgraded armor package on the turret, um, and that basically adds extra protection, but it has different modifiers against chemical and kinetic rounds. Hmm. So th that's basically something you'll have to keep in mind. And yeah, essentially no, right? That's that's knowledge you need as a player to succeed long-term. Right on, you can't just click two. Uh... Yes, <laughs> that, that, that's the, the, the TLDR. <laughs> TLDR, you can't just click two for an immediate advantage, uh, switching shell types. Cool. Um, so, I, again, the, the menu is limited because this is a demonstration. How many nations uh, are you going to have uh, representatives of vehicles in this for this game? Uh, so, nations directly is actually a slightly harder question to answer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember off the top of my head. It, it's certainly a few dozen. Uh, the thing is, we don't have traditional research trees like other games. So, we don't have one tree which only features German tanks mm. or only Italian tanks. We have those for some nations, for the major nations, okay. but we also feature multiple combined trees. So okay. for instance, there's a Southeast Asian combined tree and that features vehicles from the Japanese empire, Japan. So uh, early and late Japanese vehicles, essentially. Yeah. Uh, Chinese vehicles, North and South Korean vehicles, and probably a few from Singapore as well some of the minor nations cool. and by having these combined research trees we can actually go ahead and pick out a lot of unique vehicles that couldn't really be put into a separate standalone tree because there's no vehicles surrounding them right. right that's cool so for instance we have a we have a really interesting lineup of south american tanks and they they just couldn't be made into a completely unique line but they work really well in a combined research tree okay um so we have the the in-game uh the in-game 
cycle of tanks here, and then we have this inspect armor button. Let's can we take a closer look with that? Yeah, sure. So um, basically, just select any tank you want. Um, I we can take the T thirty four for instance. Okay. I think that's a pretty well known model. And if you uh, hit the inspect armor model, it'll, you'll see a shift in perspective, mm. and the vehicle turns all gray. Yes. Now th th that is completely intended. This is the actual collision model underneath. Mm. So th this is where your shells interact with. This is essentially what the service sees, right? Mm. Now, if you hover on that vehicle, you'll just see your cursor turn all different colors. Yeah. So you know, red, yellow, and green, and that is basically your um, penetration indicator, right? Mm. We don't have a penetration indicator in the game because I want people to actually learn. Uh, what armor layer the vehicle has mm. rather than just search for the green spot right and with this they can do that there's is also this, an option is there going the to bottom. be my question is somebody going to be able to mod that um no okay can you tell me about the rng that you guys have yes. in mind so about rng uh first of there's good news uh there is zero rng on penetration okay so it's perfectly consistent um, okay. The only change to penetration that we have, of course, is penetration loss over distance, mm. but there's no RNG. So your shell will penetrate, let's say, 102 millimeters at 500 meters every single time consistently. Mm. Uh, for accuracy, um, we're not quite set on which exact um, way of dispersing the shots uh, we're going to use. But the general rule of thumb is guns will be much more accurate than in other games. So um, I want people to actually hit what they're shooting at, right? Mm. I don't want the um, weak spot sniping where, you know, you hit one out of five shots. So I, I want that to actually be rewarding. And if a player pulls a trigger after aiming really well and they get disappointed, it's it's just annoying and frustrating, yeah. right? There will be a spotting system. So there will be a vision system mm. um, for two reasons. The first one is consistency. And the first one is, I'll, I'll be blunt about this anti-cheat. Okay. Because uh, if you have a system like War Thunder, for instance, where you have to see the vehicle yourself, you need to figure out a lot of shenanigans on the server to know when you actually hide the vehicle server side. Mm. Because otherwise, I just get the entity list of objects and I have a wall hack, right? I know where everyone is. And that right. is horrible, of course. So there will be a spotting system uh, where essentially vehicles are only shown if they're spotted according to rules with view range. But I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. I won't go into details how we handle that specifically. Fair enough. That's fine. Can we talk a little bit about how tanks are damaged in this game? Yeah. Um, well, since you got that view open already, I uh, just... Would you hit that x-ray button at the bottom? Sure. And your tank should uh, oh. find some fancy colors. Yes. Right. So uh, the red uh, parts are essentially spaced armor or mm. applique armor. Those are not the uh, what we uh, call the main armor of the vehicle. Mm. And the blue parts are the main armor. And they're translucent, so you can see all the like crew and components inside. Mm -hmm. And that is another major part of uh, how ballistics work for us. In general, um, if you penetrate a vehicle, you will cause a bunch of fragments to be thrown inside the vehicle, like in real life, yes. essentially. And depending on where those and what those fragments hit, you will deal more or less damage. So um, let's say the infamous Coppola snipe, from Wall of Tanks right. is not going to be as effective in our game, hmm. right? Because if you uh, hit the Coppola, uh, you, you might kill the commander after a few shots, but um, essentially there's not a lot of critical modules there or components that you can actually damage. So you'll get diminishing results. Same for these shots where someone runs around the corner, right? Did you, you barely manage to take off the rear end of them? Um, that's going to result in, you know, not as favorable results simply because the fragmentation doesn't actually go anywhere. It's, it's just, you know, thrown around in an empty space or sure. i know that this is mm -hmm. going to look sort of similar uh to our war thunder players out there um can you tell me about something that you guys do differently than war thunder with this damage model like as you can see it in the kill cam yes yeah. so um th that is of course uh, some people call us out for copying um it, it's it's custom made right so everything is completely developed by us and the thing is we do still have a life point system for the simple reason that we need consistency, mm -hmm. right? So we want to make the game consistent, but also give it more depth than a system where you just shoot uh, shoot tank equals damage, right? Mm -hmm. I think that just lacks a bit of depth. And especially when it comes to heavy tanks and tanks that actually feature armor, um, it's really relevant, right? So not, not every lower plate will be uh, a, a weak point like in other games, because there might be a really chunky transmission behind that. And mm. you know, you can shoot that, 
but you won't deal as much damage as a penetrating shot through the turret ring or machine gun port would yield. All right, I'm I'm hyped. I'm in. Um, <laughs> this is something that's obviously going to take a lot of playtesting to get out, uh, like to work out all the balance and all of this with, um, with with a, with an audience, right? That 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 engages as players. Yes. So absolutely, there's like I, but I, but I, but the vision is, but the vision is very interesting. But I have another burning question. <laughs> uh, premium tanks, yes or no? Yes, yes, no, or or sort of. Um, I think sort of is probably the best one yet. Yeah. Ah. Um. First off, I really don't like the term premium tank, right? Because it implies that it's a premium product that yes. is just like flat out better. And allegedly, in some cases, they are. So um, what we would like to f refer them as is collector's vehicles, because mm -hmm. that's really what we view them as, right? We, we don't just sell a tank that is flat out better, so you can pay for power, right? You, you buy the best tier rate vehicle. You buy a vehicle that is either just different, it has a, a different armament, it has a different armor layout, um, it, it just falls into a different niche than an equivalent vehicle of the same rank, or it might just be something super unique or wacky, right? Like the, the British Tog series, for instance, mm. a fan favorite. Um, that would certainly go into a collector's role, because I, I can't force people to grind through that, but I'm sure a lot of people would like to try to meme around. Sure, okay. I would like to ask a couple more questions about um because we have i don't know i i get as a, as a streamer i get a lot of offers to, to show off games and you have this really really pervasive pay to win model in a lot of games nowadays um it's like particularly predatory in the mobile game category um yeah. can you guys tell me a little bit about your plans for um balancing the game economically like games have to make money guys like some players don't like to hear that shit yes. but like welcome to the real world you have to make you have to make a profit to keep the company going to pay developers to continue improving the game um to pay support to keep to keep the community organized and everything like games have to make money how are you guys gonna balance um like happy numbers with happy players right like how yeah what's your guys's vision for that we don't want pay to win in the game because um, we've all experienced that in various different games. And from a, a gamer's point of view, which is very much my point of view as well, I, I, I really hate it. We want to avoid that. So that's why monetization wise, um, we'll just move into a different direction. We are going to sell a bunch of unique cosmetics. So as you see, all the vehicles in the garage um, are a bit plain, yeah. I'd say, right? So we don't have a lot of um, unique elements on the vehicle or the camouflages which will not have uh, an effect on gameplay they will be purely cosmetic mm. um decals stickers uh 3d customization all that kind of stuff if, if you want to put you know a teddy bear on your tank or a hamster or googly eyes then you can do that for a small price right? okay um are other that, players going to be forced to, to see my tank in its googly eyes uh, no. Okay. So th there will be some elements that are considered historical, right? Um, let's say, for instance, kill markings, right? We sure. have historical evidence for that. And um, kill markings will be considered a historical thing, so you have to look at those. But if you really don't want to see the googly eyes or, you know, the teddy bear on the tank, you can just sw switch them off. Cool. Uh, we're going to uh, sell a bunch of story driven campaigns. So there won't just be PvP in the game. There will also be a few handcrafted PvE missions. Really? Where, yes, and we do very much plan to base them on historical events, right? So there uh, might be a certain border conflict. There might be, you know, um, a large tank battle somewhere on the border of Russia. Um, there's a lot of um, really interesting events that happened in real life in Korea. We've had a lot of tank engagements. Mm. And I think uh, that also ties into our overall ethics and um, mission with this game. We don't just want to build a good game, we also want to keep history alive, mm. right? And what better way to educate people about um, the Korean conflict than to actually r let them relive a very unique and interesting story while piloting a tank. And on top of that, our ballistics and entire damage model is very flexible so we can even add different degrees of difficulty to that so it can be very much a you know just ride along story if you want to hear the story and it can be a really brutal fight if we crank up the ballistics and you know essentially make a vehicle get destroyed in one hit if we um, force people to actually lead their shots so they have to 
do all the vertical compensation for shell drop. Mm. Uh, we can add all of that in. So um, there's a lot of um, ability to make the things even more realistic and move them more towards the simulator feel than they are at the moment. For Fascinating campaigns. Yeah, PVE. That's really cool. I'm I'm super excited. I know, like, I have a, I have a ton of questions. I know this is really supposed to stay. This is this is. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep some things unasked. I'm gonna allow some things to stay unanswered because I think we need to give these guys time to continue to develop their game and time to receive feedback. So I'm gonna I'm gonna allow at this time. I I'm going to include uh, the the registration for the beta testing in the description of this video. So if you guys are interested. Um, it needs to hear your feedback as well. So please, uh, if you're interested, uh, feel free to sign up and, and get involved because um, get, a, get a feel for this uh, beyond this video because there's going to be some stuff that we, aren't, that we aren't showing or that we aren't like looking into at this time simply because it's, it's further down the line development for them to release uh, on their own time. So there's a few things I'm excited about and I'm sure you guys have some questions and you guys can leave those in comments, but please sign up for the playtest just because um, this is an interesting project. Out. Yeah, exactly. I, I could see... Um, Getting, getting some more hands-on um, to test out things like those ballistic models that you mentioned. Okay, let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's take a look at the game. So I hope this works. Match found. Yeah, Mitch. Match, Match found. found. There we go. Right. Oh, the little tank in the bottom is cute. Okay, focus. Um, uh, needing my mic. Okay. Oh yeah, so, so we spawned right next to each other, as you can see. You know, yes. the, the chonker. Yeah. Okay, and I, I picked Panzer IV because this is like one of one of my favorites. Yeah, so. I, mean, I can take you around the spin for the map. Obviously, this is a, a bit of the rough area, right? This the we're gonna set up a shooting range later around here. Um, uh, we're still going through like fine tuning the map, obviously. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think that anybody is gonna take the visuals of this as final or serious, but I think paying some attention. Let's let's pay a little bit of attention, guys, to the scale. Um, paying attention to a little bit how the tanks handle. These are those are beautiful so far. Um, I know that this is going to come off with a lot of polish. And uh, the other thing I think as we as we drive around, we get our first look. Um, the other the other tank games uh, have had ten plus years uh, to develop and polish, and um, even just from like the the video sense and audio sense. Ah, um, we have something. That's very much a diamond in the rough, so patience, guys. Oh, the okay. guy over there getting a speeding ticket. You yeah, know? yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The oh, steering so. system is super interesting. Like it already, uh, it doesn't. It's they have a little bit more of a real mechanical feel to them. Um, yes. Yeah. So in general, our vehicles have a lot more weight and like actual kinematics to them. Right? Okay. They're, they're actually as heavy as they're supposed to be. Um, there's a few things we still want to fine tune, of course, and that we'll do with some further iterations of physics. One thing, for instance, that you should notice is when driving around with a Panzer IV and you go into really tight corners, you lose a lot of speed. Because yeah. that's essentially what happens. You disconnect like that, right? Mm -hmm. You disconnect one side of the uh, track, uh, well, uh, one side of the vehicle, the entire track, from the powertrain and apply a brake to that. And that's why it, it turns quite rapidly mm -hmm. and you lose a lot of power. It's also not recommended for going up hills. Right. So you, you should try to go in a straight line. Um, we have a, a, a water containment uh, facility where you can drive through. Um, it, it's not 100% fleshed out. Uh, there's a few more VFX you want to add, but in general, you can drive through there and uh, get some water interactions if you want. Okay, let's go check it out. That's adorable. That's cute. Okay. Ah, okay. The tank must be moistened. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, that'll take... Again, We I'm so used to a game that's had 10 plus years to polish its graphics. Um, yeah. So I noticed that my tank just went through a tree. Is that yes. something um, that you guys are going to have changed later on as well? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, for consistency, um, once a tree is fallen over, it's considered destroyed, okay. and it, it won't move around anymore. Uh, that's just because vision mechanics will tie into trees, mm. and I don't want people to, you know, drag a, a tree along with them endlessly. Okay. Um, 
Oh yeah, uh, Ted with the Chieftain. I, he had to take the biggest tank, eh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but maybe I should say this, so of course in a like normal game, you won't have a, a Chieftain playing with a KV-1. Right, right, of this course. This is uh, a one-off scenario, but um, it, that, that, it's just a beautiful tank. Right? It is, it, no, it's great. Yeah. I think the models are beautiful already, like, uh, I think it's really cool. So th there's a few compromises that we just have to make for uh, gameplay purposes, but we're of course gonna you know add in some sounds for a tree falling over and uh, add some VFX. So it's gonna look a lot nicer than it currently is. Okay. Of course, um, all the like uh, spread of the uh, the dispersion circle and everything, uh, those are not 100% dialed in. Right, 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 so right, right, right. Those are merely a suggestion right now, and we, we can change those around. Um, what you might notice though is that uh, the aiming works very differently from other games, right? Yeah. You can have a have a try at my. Have a bonk. One. Let's go. Yes. Let's see. Okay, bonk. It bounced. Aha! It bounced. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, um, ricochets are a bit more painful. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, uh, we have different ricochet angles uh, compared to let's say wall of tanks. Okay. But they still follow strict rules, so they're sure. not randomly based like War Thunder. There is no chance for ricochet at a certain angle. It mm. either bounces or it doesn't. Okay, and I noticed so. so for example, in yeah. contrast, like so we're looking for the weak point targeting, but something that is usually a weak point in another game, like a hatch, may not actually. Like uh, in history, the driver's hatch works out in your T thirty four model. You have the hatch modeled because uh, it's going to be actually a higher thickness than the surrounding armor. So, yes. uh, so you you have to sort um, of test and and use that use the. Um, Use yeah, your your X-ray. Use the much. armor inspector because it's, it might not. I'll try it out here, of course. But it's a hit. It's yeah. a hit. Okay, there we go. Yes. Someone so, just had a bad um, day. Yeah. Um, basically, for uh, the T thirty four, the early models had uh, forty five millimeters on the drive satch, but that was uh, thickened to sixty millimeters later. Okay. So it, it's not always uh, just just shoot the machine gun port. Right. right. Because you know, tank designers were pretty smart people, and in general, you, you don't design a tank and say, oh. We have like a hundred millimeters of protection off the front, but let's cut a hole in that armor, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you know put a marker there and uh, allow people to target that, right? Right, right. So in in general, many things like machine gun ports will generally be mm. weaker than surrounding armor, but not always. So it's really something you just have to learn, and it's it very much uh, depends on the individual vehicle. So I noticed that um, the damage is not it's not modeled visually on the outside of the tank yet. Is that something you guys are going to have yes. later? Okay. Yeah. And we're trying to use real-life references. So, for instance, if you blow up a vehicle, like the, this T-34 here, right? Um, you might get the turf, turf ripping off, and you might get some sparks flying around or um, uh, some flames erupting from the turret. And those are obviously in a rough state at this point in time, right? With the mostly block outs. Sure. But we really, really want to refine them and make them as accurate and realistic as we can get them. Are we going to have respawns? I see he's back. Um, are we going to have respawn in game? Um, there may be game modes which feature respawns later. Um, right here, this is just for testing. So yes, of course. We, we don't shoot uh, the wrong guy that everyone wants to harass for, for a laugh, right? And then he has to go back to the garage. No so um, this is just for testing right yeah, now. Yeah, okay, curious, yeah. Lovely. I think if all of us work together, we can take Ted, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> might, might take some time, though. Hmm. I fear my um, KB-1 is not adequately armed <laughs> to deal with the Chieftain. Very even. possibly not. No, no, not so much, huh? That's oh, so funny. Yeah, ouch. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Yeah, yeah, okay. I want to take this time to... Whoa, nice. Gorgeous. Um, yes, there's obviously uh, more polish. There's more development to be done, but I think the when the beta come out, it's going to be super interesting. Ah, look at those sparks. That's cool. Wow. Cook off. Question. Are the um, are like the the holes of the tanks of the players you've destroyed going to remain on the map, uh, in game? Yes. Okay. So uh, later, when a vehicle is destroyed, right now we don't actually have a destroyed vehicle model, right? Okay. But we will add those in, and of course, like if you know you shoot someone's turret off, then the turret uh, is going to be an object on the map, right? You can push that around, and like if you're frisky, you could use that as cover, right? Mm -hmm. So all of that is uh, going to be featured in the game. We we do have plans for esports. Oh, um, I won't say any more here. Okay. But um, I think the pure fact that uh, ammo choices are actually choices, and there's different approaches to 
defeating armor in the game. Yeah. There's no RNG. There's not just one better solution. Yes. Um, already makes this game or gives this game a solid foundation for esports. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, in general, we're going to have a smaller format, right? So w while there will be larger game modes, uh, we do plan on having some very small 5v5, 6v6 game mode as a core of the game hmm. to have like that really fast and competitive gameplay, right? So, uh, maybe smaller maps and just have less density of players on there huh. uh, to give them more freedom to like express tactical ideas, right? Okay. To give them more room to breathe. Okay. Playing together is going to be um, a, a feature of the game, of course. And there will also be clans, right? So, um, like, no worries, anyone who um, has been uh, part of Wall of Tanks clan or, or War Thunder clan, if they want to try out this game, they can play with their buddies. Uh, we're going to support that 100%. Um, of course, we uh, will limit that a bit in the smaller game maps, right? So sure. you, you can't uh, platoon up with like four mates and then uh, kick a bunch of randoms. <laughs> That's yeah. going to be a bit unfair. But, yeah. Um, um, we also plan. We have some. We have some tests as well. I'm, I'm not going to spoil too much, but uh, we have some really cool Rayfire um, interactions, mm -hmm. which is essentially uh, physics destructions. So you know, if you shoot a house, it actually crumbles into pieces. It doesn't mm -hmm. just disappear in a huge cloud of smoke. And we also plan to add in some revolution with that. So, for instance, you take out a tower and you get a, uh, another crossing ac uh, across a river, something like that, right? Or you might take out a bridge and prevent exactly that crossing. Mm. I love it the amount of the amount of details, even just like how how this tank handles, and the fact that each of these each of these tanks behaves differently each of these tanks is going to act different it's going to feel different for the player as well as obviously perform differently there's different guns you have the different ammo you have the space armor you have you have all of these sort of little little facts and features but the fact that they simply just handle differently from another in a way that's not just like speed or how fast they turn but it's how they turn this is really cool um this this game has has an, I'll just say it it's a, I, th I think this is a game has incredible potential and it's, I'm sorry the googly eyes are cute um I'm really thrilled I wanna I cannot wait to see more uh the game's calm look is really exciting this is something that I'm on that I'm on board for I'm I'm, I'm gonna say it like I'm I'm on board I cannot wait for Steel Aces I cannot wait for for the playtest um I, I want to see more I want to play more I want to hear more uh I want to hear more of the engines I want to hear the gun sounds like you guys have already. The fact that you guys have already gone to go see the real things at these events to try to to pick them up for uh, for extra details in your game is is amazing. I'm there's so many questions, but again, I think it's important to like let's we'll keep this concise. Like we could do this for hours, I think, and and, and ask questions yeah. and show off because you're obviously something that's super obvious is like the uh, the, the passion of the of you guys uh, on your project. Um, you could obviously talk to me about this all day, but I think I want to go back to your team and and your vision tell me about like why 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 did you make this game what 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 do you want people yeah. to walk away from as an experience yeah so um as i mentioned before this is very much a passion project right and uh, this may be a bit of a shocker but like the core game so all the like programming for this game was actually done by only two people mm. uh over the course of three years and uh yeah like we we put a, a lot of work into this a lot of passion and the the reason why that this project started is simply because I felt like um, not all the tank games uh, were made yet, and I think it's time to you know build a game that fills that gap, right? Um, something that is just offers more depth to gameplay, especially when it comes to ballistics, and that also shows that yes, you actually can build a game that is successful and that doesn't have any form of, um, I'd say, problematic monetization, like premium ammo. So that is that is really the, the core here, right? We, we just want to build a good game, right? Because we all also want to play that ourselves and to have, have a good time, build a good game. Right on. Uh, I want to thank you guys for your time. I want to thank you guys for this look. Um, this is a beautiful game. Whether you're a, a World of Tanks player, a War Thunder player, there's a lot of um, things that I think are, are comfortable in terms of familiarity for players who've been a fan of the genre for a long time. But also, if you take it seriously from a historical perspective or you take it seriously from a competitive perspective, um, you know, you mentioned your own background, playing Clan Wars, um, and, and playing competitively, this is this is for, for serious players as well. 
That is that is exciting. I'm I'm excited. I love this. I love this already. I'm all in. Um, thank you guys very much. And uh, once again, please ask your questions down in the comments. Uh, follow along with them. I know that people are going to be all asking all at once for things that you guys aren't ready to release yet or whatever. So a patience, of course, for an excited player base. But um, I love sort of the size of the maps already um, and the feel of everything. I love the way the vehicle behaves. I love the way the things... I know that it's not all the way complete, but... You know the sound of everything and what have you is um is phenomenal so thank you for this first look i, I can't wait to see where it goes